Hello, women of the well. It is uh, so good to have you gathered together one last time. Uh, in some ways, it's hard to believe that we are to the end of the year, and in other ways, um, it feels like the longest year ever. But it's been such a privilege to journey with you and travel alongside of you, even though it's looked a little bit different this year. Um, there's been so many blessings that have come out of it as well, and I hope you're experiencing that also. Um, special shout out to all of the leaders uh, today. I just um, cannot say enough about the way you all have hung in there, how you have been flexible and adaptable, how you have been faithful uh, to both the study and to one another, and how you've cared and shepherded these amazing women that God has put in your care. I just, I so appreciate each and every one of you. And so um, ladies, make sure you give your leaders just a high five or a hug or an elbow bump, whatever you can do um, today. Just let them know that you appreciate them. I am so blessed. Uh, just that God has brought you all to this amazing ministry. And so thanks for hanging in there with me this year. I wanted to take a minute uh, for your last time together and just um, stop and just reflect and take some time and encourage you to take some time together as a group to do exactly this because we have spent a lot of time this year digging into God's word and I am a firm believer that if we don't stop at times in our lives if we don't take the time to pause to mark the moment to acknowledge um, and reflect on how God is changing us what has he been saying to us how is he convicting our hearts um, what has he done I think we miss a huge opportunity opportunity to learn and to grow and to be changed people. I say this all the time. We, we do not want to be the same people today that we were when we walked in here. We started meeting together in September, even the same people that we were last week. God loves us too much to leave us the way that we are. And so we consistently want to just stop and say, God, how are you at work in my life? And when we share that with one another, I think something really um, special happened. So that's what we're going to take a minute to do this morning or this evening. Um, we are going to just pause and say, how has the study changed who I am? And then how have our relationships with one another left a mark on me this year? I know for me personally, I have to say, I think James um, was one of the most challenging books of the Bible that I have ever studied. God has used it over and over again in my life this last year to just um, make me uh, more like him, right? Not to just be a better person, not to not to, um, to just live out differently, that's true, but live out in the way that I reflect more holistically who he is to the people around me and that's that's what james has all been about uh, i remember i know i've shared this on the podcast but tim Mackey, one of my favorite uh bible studies or bible teachers said you know james is this beautifully crafted punch in the gut and i uh remember that um uh, matt chandler who is also we've been using some of his work to help in our study this year he said james is like a minefield Right? You're kind of like stepping here and stepping there and everywhere you step, it's like something else is blowing up in your heart or your mind or convicting your soul. And I actually have loved that about the book of James. David Platt, I'm going to read this to you all uh, just from uh, my notes right in front of me, but David Platt says, you know, it's probably much easier to draw a crowd by preaching on the next and coolest topic that appeals to us. But what happens in the process is we start taking parts of the Bible we like and we tailor it to what we want to hear, and then we create a Christianity that appeals to us. We inevitably ignore some of the tough parts of the Bible, the parts that confront us, the parts that cause us to change. And um, I'm so thankful that we decided to study James this year because James is challenging and it's been tough. But if we, if we choose to ignore those parts of the Bible, again, God can't do some of his best work in us. And so I hope that has been part of your experience as well um, because we want to be women who are transformed. And so uh, my question for you today is what are you going to do with those pieces that you have absorbed over these last months? Um, what are you going to do in those places that it's messing with your soul? Are you going to invite them in? 
Are you going to share them? Are you going to pray over them? Are you going to allow them to just sit with them and, and let them change who you are? Are you going to ignore them and resist them and just go on about the next thing? And I hope the answer is, and that's why we're doing this today, you're gonna to take a minute and just acknowledge it and then invite God into those places and ask him to continue to change who you are. So I wanna give you a quick reminder of some of the things that we have covered in the book of James and I sent um, these to your leaders and so they have some of these big topic ideas with some verses to go with them but I just wanna remind you to jar your memory. Um, so we talked about our, our attitudes during trials and during difficult times. What do we do with those? How do we allow those to um, change us? How do we use them to produce more faith? Do we persevere? Do we consider it joy? <laughs> Are we at a place where we can do that with, with some of the hardships in our lives because they actually point us to Jesus? So that was one of the things we talked about. What about um, being, uh, being not just hearers of the word, but being actually doers of the word? How do we, how do we make sure in our lives that we don't just say that we believe something, but that we actually do what we say, that our, that our actions line up with our identity. And that was a big theme in James. Sit with that. Is that one of the things that impacted you? Is your everyday life, does it actually line up with what you say you believe? What about um, favoritism or partiality? How might you be showing um, favor to people uh, maybe not even uh, realizing it, but showing favor to people based on um, their position, on what they can do for you, um, on the kind of house they live in, the neighborhood they live in, the color of their skin, their gender. How? What are some of those um, uh, ways that we are naturally biased that God just wants to open our eyes to and say, you know what, you're showing a little favoritism. You are being partial in these areas, but that's, I see everybody as my sons and daughters. And so um, is that something that has sat with you? What about your tongues? <laughs> we have come back to this over and over again in the book of James, this idea of this tiny little thing that God has put into our mouths that has the ability and the power to control so many things. And so is that something that has convicted you and sat, that you've had to sit with? Um, how are you using your tongue? Are you using it to encourage one another, to build one another up? Are you, are you um, using it to show acts of love? Are you using it to maybe challenge one another in good ways? Are you being critical and are you being judgmental? Are you talking about people behind their back? Where are those areas when you find that you're using certain words or saying certain things or find yourself in conversations that God is just nudging you to say, ah, 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 be, be careful here. What is that? Is that one of the areas that God has been transforming you in? Share that with one another today. Um, what about wisdom? You remember we had a section on wisdom and there's two sources of wisdom. And where, where are we getting our true wisdom? Are we relying on God to be our source of all good things, of all wisdom? Or are we um, letting all the voices in from around our culture to start influencing um, what we think, what we do? Not that we can't let them think uh, or influence us at all, but what's the primary source? Are we using God's word, his truth, to block out all of the other noise or at least filter it so that we are coming back to um, who God is and, and what he wants to do in our life and using him as our source of wisdom. Are we humbling ourselves? <laughs> the James talked a lot about humility. How are we posturing ourselves before God? Are we humbling ourselves? Are we submitting ourselves to his authority? Are we letting go of control in our lives? Are we putting our plans at our feet? Are we, are we putting... Um, our finances at his feet? Are we, are we allowing him to do what he wants with our lives? Or are we holding so tightly to what we want that we just can't see what uh, he might have in store for us? That was another big theme in the book of James. Uh, are we undergirding everything we do in prayer? 
Uh, we talked about that just a few weeks ago. When we when we have things happen, whether good or bad, in hardship and praise, are we coming to the Lord with those things? Are we praying for the needs of people around us? Are we trusting God to answer those prayers? Are we saying those big, bold prayers and trusting that he will move, that our words actually have power with him? And then in the times when he doesn't seem to be answering our prayers, what are we doing with that? Actually, it goes back to the trust and control. Can we release our expectations and realize that prayer is a way that we deepen our relationship with God? It's not just about getting answers to the stuff we want. Where, where's God convicting you today? Where is he moving in your soul? What has he taught you over these last um, several months? I know um, for me, um, I think one of the things that has uh, been very convicting to me about the book of James has actually been a whole host of things that God has used in my life that have come at me from different angles. And that's so often what God does. He uses different ways to speak to us about the same thing. And um, last year, uh, in the midst of the country, when uh, the racial tension really flared up last summer, especially after the death of George Floyd, I was um, put into a discussion group, a small group, as part of a way in our church to just bring unity and um, to discuss some of these really big, hard things that our country was going through. And what do we do with that? And um, there were uh, three black men who were in that discernment group with me, all members of Christ Church who have become dear friends of mine. And just to listen to their perspective and listen to, um, to how they walk through life in maybe a different way than I ever even knew. It brought me to the book of James when we talk about uh, how James continues to call us to see people as God sees them and, and calls us to care for the marginalized and the impressed. And it was interesting to layer those conversations in with the book of James and to see how God was opening my heart and my mind to care for people and to see things from a different perspective especially those that are on the margins. And, and so that has been a really interesting experience for me. And I, I've shared that I'm in seminary. And so some of my seminary work has been on this same thing, that, that God has set up systems throughout the history of time that care for the poor, that see the marginalized, that care for the oppressed. And so when I'm reading James and he's telling me, you know, asking me and telling me and challenging me with um, what I'm doing with my resources, how I'm, how I'm treating the poor, how I'm um, showing favoritism, all of these things that I'm examining, it's just all coming together and it's God is using it to change me and to ask me how are we investing our resources even in a way that could make a difference in some of these areas. Areas. And so, um, ladies, I am with you in all of this. The Lord has been using this book of James to speak to me and convict me and challenge me. And I just wanted to share that with you because I know if I'm asking you to share this with one another, I wanted to be honest about the way that it's also challenging me. So I hope that gives you a little bit of courage if you need it to share with one another today. Uh, the second thing that's all about the study, that's all about the word, share how God is moving in your life, but then take a minute to just share with one another how just the community of being together, of being present, of being faithful, of praying for one another, how has that made a difference for you this year? Look at one of the other women in your circle and just share with them how you have seen Jesus at work in them in this year and how it's encouraged you in your own faith because that's what we're all about um, as a church in women's ministry at the well we want to learn and we want to grow and we want to do it in community and those things are always done together and so uh, like I said ladies I hope you've had a good year thanks for hanging in there with me I hope you have a wonderful time together this last time of just sharing and being together and praying for one another. Do that. Celebrate. Enjoy. And um, I did mention in the podcast last week, we are going to do some more podcasts here coming up in May and June. So it's not going to be an official study, but lots of different topics with some new speakers that I hope to introduce. I'm getting that scheduled together. So do check back to the podcast. Um, come back and listen, share it, and be sure to connect with one another uh, as we go about maybe some of our separate ways uh, this summer. And uh, I will keep you posted on what the fall holds for all of us. Again, lots of changes, lots of different um, um, 
you know, things that we are figuring out as the world around us continues to change that we have to adapt to. But I'm excited for some plans that we have for the fall. And so I cannot wait to hopefully start seeing more of you soon. And just God bless you. Uh, may he be with you. May he make his face to shine upon you and um, be gracious to you now and um, forevermore. And so hopefully we will um, see you guys again uh, real soon.